I'm Alex Sweeney, and I'll be reading Numbers 13 through 15. The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. These are their names. From the tribe of Roman, Shamua, son of Zechur, from the tribe of Simon, Zaphat, son of Horai, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jephunneh, from the tribe of Issachar, Egal, son of Joseph, from the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, son of Nun, from the tribe of Benjamin, Paltai, son of Raphu, from the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, son of Sodai, from the tribe of Manasseh, a tribe of Joseph, Gadai, son of Susai, from the tribe of Dan, Amiel, son of Gamali, <laughs> from the tribe of Naphtali, Nabai, son of Vosai, from the tribe of God, Geuel, son of Machai. These are the names of the men Moses sent to explore the land. Moses gave Hoshea, son of Nun, the name Joshua. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, Go up through the Negev and on into the hill count country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehob toward Lebo, Hama. They went up through Negev and came to Hebron, where Ahiman, Shisha, and Talmai, the descendants of Enoch, lived. Hebr Hebron had built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. When they reached the valley of Eshkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community in Kadash, in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here, it, here is its fruits. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Enoch there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. Numbers chapter 14. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them, then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meetings to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all the signs I have performed among them, I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them. 
but I will make you into a nation greater and stronger than they. Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear about it. By your power you brought these people up from among them, and they will tell the inhabitants of this land about it. They have already heard that you, Lord, are with these people, and that you, Lord, have been seen face to face, that your cloud stays over them, and that you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. If you put all these people to death, leaving none alive, nations who have heard this report about you will say, The Lord was not able to bring these people into the land he promised them on oath, so he slaughtered them in the wilderness. Now may the Lord's strength be displayed, just as you have declared. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love, and forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation. In accordance with your great love, forgive the sin of these people, just as you have pardoned them from the time they left until now. The Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you asked. Nevertheless, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but who disobeyed me and tested me ten times, not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their ancestors. No one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. Since the Am Amalekites and the Canaanites are living in the valleys, turn back tomorrow and set out toward the desert along the route to the Red Sea. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of these grumbling Israelites, so tell them, As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. In this wilderness your bodies will fall. Every one of you, twenty years old or more, who was counted in the census and who has grumbled against me, not one of you will enter the land. I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. As for your children, that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But as for you, your bodies will fall in this wilderness. Your children will be shepherds here for forty years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies in the wilderness, for forty years, one year, for each of the forty days you explored the land. You will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community, which has banded together against me. They will meet their end in this wilderness. Here they will die. So the men Moses had sent to explore the land, who returned and made the whole community grumble against him by spreading a bad report about it. These men, who were responsible for spreading the bad news, the bad report about the land, were struck down and died of a plague before the Lord. Of the men who went to explore the land, only Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, survived. When Moses reported to this, when Moses reported this to all the Israelites, they mourned bitterly. Early the next morning, they set out for the highest point in the hill country, saying, "Now we are ready to go up to the land the Lord promised." Surely we have sinned. But Moses said, Why are you disobeying the Lord's command? This will not succeed. Do not go up, because the Lord is not with you. You will be defeated by your enemies, for the Amalekites and the Canaanites will face you there, because you have turned away from the Lord. He will not be with you, and you will fall by the sword. Nevertheless, in their presumption, they went up towards the highest point in the hill country, though neither Moses nor the Ark of the Lord's Covenant moved from the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in the hill country came down and attacked them and beat them down all the way to Hormah. Numbers chapter 15 The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, After you enter the land, I am giving you as a home and a present to the Lord food offerings from the herd or the flock as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, whether burnt offerings or sacrifices, for special vows or freewill offerings of festival offerings. Then the person who brings an offering shall present to the Lord a grain offering of a tenth of an ephah, or the finest flour mixed with a quarter of a hen, of olive oil. With each lamb for the burnt offering or the sacrifice, prepare a quarter of a hen of wine as a drink offering. With the ram, prepare a grain offering of two tenths of an ephah, of the finest flour mixed with a third of a hen of olive oil, and a third of a hen of wine as a drink offering. Offer it as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. When you prepare a young bull as a burnt offering or sacrifice for a special vow or a fellowship offering to the Lord, 
bring with the bowl a grain offering of three tenths of an effa of the finest flour mixed with half a hen of olive oil, and also bring half a hen of wine as a drink offering. This will be a food offering and an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Each bull or ram, each lamb or young goat is to be prepared in this manner. Do this for each one, for as many as you prepare. Everyone who is native, native born must do these things in this way, when they present a food offering as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. For the generations to come, whenever a foreigner or anyone else living among you presents a food offering as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, they must do exactly as you do. The community is to have the same roles for you and for their foreigner residing among you. This is the lasting ordinance for the generations to come. You and the foreigner shall be the same before the Lord. The same laws and regulations will apply both to you and the foreigner reading among you. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land to which I am taking you, and you eat the food of the land, present a portion as an offering to the Lord. Present a loaf from the first of your ground meal and present it as an offering from the threshing floor. Throughout the generations to come, you are to give this offering to the Lord from the first of your ground meal. Now, if you as a community unintentionally fail to keep any of these commands the Lord gave Moses, any of the Lord's commands to you through him, from the day the Lord gave them and continuing through the generations to come, and if this is done unintentionally without the community being aware of it, then the whole community is to offer a young bull for a burnt offering as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, along with its prescribed grain offering and drink offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. The priest is to make atonement for the whole Israelite community, and they will be forgiven. For it was not intentional, and they have presented to the Lord for their wrong a food offering and a sin offering. The whole Israelite community and the foreigners residing among them will be forgiven, because all the people were involved in the unintentional wrong. But if just one person sins unintentionally, that person must bring a year-old female goat for a sin offering. The priest is to make atonement before the Lord for the one who erred by sin, by sinning unintentionally. And when atonement has been made, the person will be forgiven. One and the same law applies to everyone who sins unintentionally, whether native-born Israelite or foreigner residing among you. But anyone who sins defiantly, whether native-born or foreigner, blasphemies the Lord and must be cut off from the people of Israel because they have despised the Lord's word and broken his commands. They must surely be cut off. Their guilt remains on them. While the Israelites were in the wilderness, a man was found gathering wood on the Sabbath. Those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron in the whole assembly, and they kept him in custody because it was not clear what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, The man must die. The whole assembly must stone him outside the camp. So the assembly took him outside the camp and stoned him to death as the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, Throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at so you will remember all the commands of the Lord, that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by chasing after the lust of your own heart and eyes. Then you will remember to obey all my commands and will be consecrated to your God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. I pray this reading blessed you today. I pray that you have such a good day. And I pray that you enjoyed watching this. Thank you so much. Hello, my friend, and welcome to Fury into Faith Global Bible Revival, where we are passionate to see a million people read the Word of God cover to cover in a year. My name is Summer Day, and I have with me in the studio the fabulous Alec, Alex, <laughs> Alex Sweeney. Is it Sweeney or Swinney? Sweeney spelled like Swinney. Sweeney spelled like Swinney. Alex Sweeney. Yes. Yes. From the Sweeney Seven. Yes. Woohoo! <laughs> I told you I had one job. I just had to get your name right. It's all downhill from you there. Already messed it up. <laughs> and we're not going to fix it. We're going to move forward. Okay. I like it. I like it. <laughs> How are you feeling after recording your section of reading the Bible? I am feeling super good. It was very intimidating. It was nerve wracking, but it was cool to know like regular people who might not even own a Bible are going to be watching me read the Bible. Yeah. 
Yeah. So like, why be perfect? I love it. Because definitely was not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. We don't want perfect people reading. We want normal people just like you reading that people go, oh, she's not to say that word either. <laughs> okay. Now we said that you're the Sweeney seven. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about that for people that don't know anything about you and who you are and what you're up to. Why, why are you called that? Well, I have seven kids. And you um, look like you're like 16 <laughs> and you're stunning. Oh, and Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have seven kids. Well, we actually got the name when we, it was just five, we were pregnant with our fifth kid and, you know, like two parents, five kids that equals seven. Yeah. Now we didn't change it to the Sweeney nine. We just kept it at the Sweeney seven and we just happened to have had two more kids since then. Yeah. And how old is your youngest? She just turned one. So you may at some point have to figure out what you're going to do. About- yeah, maybe at some point we'll, no, we'll get there when it. Well, I know you're called that because you're on Instagram and we just have to like right away share probably one of the most exciting <laughs> things I have ever seen in my life on Instagram. I recently saw the video of you and you just happened to be, you know, giving birth in a car <laughs> in a moving vehicle. You guys didn't stop. You just. Nope. It uh, absolutely <laughs> blew my mind. I had to watch it seven times. Seven you giving times. birth, catching your own baby. <laughs> That's what I did there. <laughs> you giving birth and catching your own baby. Yeah. So tell us about this. It, there's actually a really, really cool story, story behind it. So I just kind of found Jesus like a year and a half before. Mm-hmm. I grew up, you know, with a Christian faith and everything. I had a, a kid's Bible that I was given. I had never opened my Bible on my own until about a year and a half before before that yeah. that video. Um, and I opened up my Bible and just like found Jesus and fell in love. Uh-huh. And it was a year of like the hardest, like things that most people don't go through yeah. at 21, 22 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and when my husband and I kind of like came out of it, we had four kids at the time, we got pregnant. <laughs> and during that pregnancy, you know, you're still like trying to like find Jesus. You're like coming out of all this chaos and everything. And one of the things I was like, I want a home birth. And he was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we fought about it for a little while. Then I was just like, okay, God, I'm just going to give this to you. And I remember I would sit there and pray, God, this is the birth that I want. But even if it's the complete opposite, I trust you. Wow. Because my thing was, I wanted to... Like, I wanted to be there to catch my baby. I didn't want lights all around me. I I wanted just, like, this peaceful, like, with my family around, the <laughs> yeah. kids there. Yeah. And but my husband wanted me, like, safe, safely at the hospital. Like, that was at the time. That was, you know, what we were so not planned at all. <laughs> we go to the midwife right down the street from where we lived at the time. I was like, hey, I think I'm in labor. You know, let's make sure before I go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, you're in labor. Just drive. I'll meet you there. Okay. Looking back, she probably should have kept me there. And I was like, I walked out of there without a shirt on. I was like in labor. Wow. <laughs> and I get into the car and we're... And it was your fifth child. So yeah, you, you knew labor yeah. well. You weren't I, I guessing knew. like a first time mom. Yeah. Okay. I knew. I knew. Um, and we're like seven minutes from the hospital. And I look over to my husband. I was like, hey, take a picture so we can remember this moment. Mm. And he takes out his phone and films it. And the like only God could have made it that perfect while he's driving. Like that was perfect, right? And we were safe. Was it a little dangerous? Yes, but he was just trying to get us to the hospital. Like he was doing his job. Yeah. And it was beautiful. Like, you, did you know the baby was gonna come out? Or did you kind of like, I'm like, why didn't you pull over? Because he was like, We're trying to get to the hospital, you know. He was just concerned about yeah. how to get to the hospital. And if you get to the watch hospital. to the end of the video, you will hear me saying I remember so clearly. I said, I feel like I'm dreaming. It makes me emotional. Oh, yeah, because that was what, like, you know, I wanted to deliver my own baby with my family around. Oh, <laughs> like, how how perfect was that? But we still made it to the hospital so that we was still, you know, being respectful of my husband who. I, yeah, I guess yeah, you were having it was all literally the things. Perfect. I guess you were having all the things. Were, at what point, <laughs> it, what, was there a point? Because I, I, my second daughter, I thought she was going to come out in the car. So yeah. I'm la- I, like, I have a similar story where I saw a midwife and she's like, you'll probably have this baby tonight. And we lived far away. So she's like, go to the hotel. It's just down the street. <laughs> and I remember things happening and then having a contraction. And then I remember telling my husband, you tell her we're coming there. We're coming to the hospital. This baby's coming. It's coming. And then my water broke all over the floor. And I remember grabbing him, looking him in the eye and going, we do not have much time. Like, I was freaked out. And I remember driving, and the whole time I'm like, 
breathing fast, holding, yeah. clenching everything. My friend's in the back. He's driving. And I, we missed one red light. And I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> I counted the cars. I was like, we're going to miss the next one. He's going to have to catch the baby. She's going to have to <laughs> no, we'll tell the cars to go around. And the Midwest's going to have to run down because we're like right around yeah. the corner. By the grace of God, we made it through that light. But I remember the whole time thinking, like, I, I was clenching it all in and everything. So when I watched your video, I go, was there a point when you realized, despite your best efforts, there was no chance this baby was going to wait? Or did it just kind of happen? You weren't thinking about it? What was going on? I think it was just like there was such a peace in the car that it won the fact that my midwife put me into the car facing the back. She was like, this will be more comfortable. Okay. So she was, it was literally like, unbeknownst to her like preparing me to give birth yeah because that's a great position to give birth in like i guess they do that in the hospital (laughs) yeah great position but when my water breaks the baby comes out right after okay so my water broke as we're passing this one school that we actually go to church at right now like the same school that my daughter was born at that intersection Yeah. yeah We go to church there, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so my water broke, and I was like... So you're like, okay, well, then this is happening. So great. There's like, a little scary, but it was just so awesome. Yeah, but you just said that there was just kind of peace in the car yeah. and everything. Because it was, like, what I wanted. And I also <laughs> knew that we were safe. Like, if I would have been worried, I would have been, like, pull over, like, call the ambulance now. Yeah. I knew that, like, I was like, everything's good. When we pulled up to the hospital... Um, one of the midwives was there to meet us and they were all kind of like freaking out. And I remember I told them like, everything's fine. Everything's good. Like, we're all good. Yeah. Like I was like, the, the hospital probably has experienced that yeah. before, but maybe they don't. were all like freaking out. And I was just really like, everything's fine. Everything's good. They like yeah. grabbed a wheelchair and what? Like, yeah, they just, we just like sat down. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of had the baby sat. Yeah. I just took you in and, huh. and now ironically, my husband delivers our babies at home by herself. Okay. So number <laughs> six, so number seven, he's like, yeah, you know. Instead of chancing it in a movie yeah. vehicle, let's just go ahead and... Wow. And how did that experience transform your family? Like, what came from that? So many blessings. That was, like, the... Oh, my man, I feel like I have, like, many burning bush moments, like, pivotal moments. And, like, that was just, like, another... Or maybe one of the first biggest confirmations where God's, like, despite your sin, despite the mistakes, like y'all have made I'm going to bless you because you're you're seeking me and so that's like that was probably one of the first big moments um and then like you know the next many many months after it this is the most horrible time to have to pause you to go to a cooper <laughs> sorry no, you're fine. We have to. Yeah, no, yeah. so we're gonna take a break and we'll figure right because I need to uh, I need to oh my goodness this. yeah we can give you a back and Alex I gotta say like we just left you off <laughs> you were crying and I hated cutting you off you're getting really emotional and moved sharing with us about um just how the Lord has shown up since that experience of birthing your baby in the car <laughs> and um just how you were getting emotional and getting moved what was that about what was going on yeah it was just you know like God works in more ways than just like the the simple blessings, the small blessings, the, go, yeah. oh, you know, like the help here and there, mm-hmm. um, giving birth in the car and like the blessings that we, we received from that, it was like a huge, hey, you know, you ran away from me, mm. it, but you came back. Yeah. Like, I love you. Like, I will pour out my blessings on you. Mm. And like, so that's what that represented to us. You know, that was kind of like the first time of getting to see like, God's not just somebody that, you know, you can pray to. Like, he actually wants to bless you and, like, give you things that you're not even asking for. Yeah. You know, things that you don't, sometimes don't even know that you want. But also you're like, oh, like, I don't I don't necessarily like, need that. That'd be cool if I got it. And God's like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna give you more than that. <laughs> yeah. He likes to delight yeah. you. So what were some of the blessings that came out? I know you were sharing with me that you got interviewed. Like, so how did people find out about this birth? Like, it was like you know, TV footage leaked out or something. And you said everybody found out. Tell me more about that. I guess I didn't know. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So I had asked my husband to take a picture. He recorded it. You know, God came, kept us all safe while the camera was perfectly on me. <laughs> I know the just, whole time I'm like, just really cool. how did you not crash? <laughs> um, 
But then whenever we did get to the hospital, like God gave me words to type out. So I just typed them on my notes as I always do. Yeah. Um, and my husband's sitting there on the couch and he goes, can I share this? Wow. And I was like, you can share it. But we're going to share it with these words that I just typed. Because wow. I wasn't going to share it at all. At first, wow. I was like, you cannot send this to anyone. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is this private. Is me. Yeah, this is yeah, me yeah, having a baby. Be very vulnerable. But I think typing out the the original caption that I had with it, like those yeah. words, I was like, like, this needs to be shared. And, oh, yeah. And from there, it just, like, spread. And even that was its own answered prayer because back before Instagram was a thing, I thought it was cool to, like, get a viral video so I would pray for years. You know, like the cat videos? Oh, like yeah. YouTube yeah. stuff. You wanted your own cat video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I'd do something cool so we can go viral. <laughs> Where and did the video go viral at? Everywhere? Or? It started in TikTok. Okay. Yes, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. How many how many views did you have to get on TikTok? I mean, honestly, I couldn't tell you. I don't know because people like repost it, repost. but I know like we were interviewed in probably like 20 different countries. Like, I'd say well over like quarter of the world has wow. seen me have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I know you mentioned something about Jimmy Kimmel. I feel like you have to share that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, which is actually funny. Right after that happened, we were like, now we need a new car. Like, yeah, I think I need to sell this one. Yeah. So I was like, let's pray for a new car. Like, God can do whatever. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy Kimmel called us up. Was it you know, him or like his It assistant. wasn't actually him. It was okay. like his assistant. Yeah. Lots of people were calling us up. Um, we didn't answer all phone calls. Like we didn't do interviews with like the news or anything because yeah. they really like, yeah, we just didn't. Um, but certain people, we were like, yeah, like let's do it. And so they were like, hey, we want to come to you though. Wow. Now, Jimmy Kimmel had to stay in the studio, mm-hmm. but they sent like their film crew and everything. Yeah. And they were like kind of doing some weird stuff um, like while they were there. Like they had people inside and outside, which I didn't even think twice about. Hmm. And then... Like, we're just sitting there, and he told us, he was like, whatever you do, do not get up. Like, stay right where you are. So I didn't even have shoes on. (laughs) I didn't even have socks on, like, nothing on. (laughs) And so then we're just, like, interviewing. He's talking about stuff. And then he was like, will you all go to your front door? And I'm like, no. (laughs) (laughs) You told us to sit here. That's so funny. So we go there, and then open up the door, and, like, it's a brand new van that now has five seats to, like, fit all of us. Wow. It was really cool. And we had prayed jokingly kind of yeah like, like or gets another yeah, car it was a you know a car that fits all of us yeah that was it was really really cool that is really cool that's amazing so that's just one of the blessings that you're yeah, talking it's about. like god wow. and all i did was just have a baby by myself in the car and that was tell me about i can imagine that you probably got a lot of comments a lot of messages from women maybe that you inspired them or does anything stand out about anybody contacting you that like just you sharing that had a profound effect. Did the Lord encourage you? Do you remember a story like that or anything? Well, if I'm being completely honest, from the birth, though, there were lots of women who were encouraged, like, you know, in birthing ways, like in pregnancy yeah. ways. Um, it was actually like my husband and I's marriage. That- you can check out the rest of this interview right here or by going to BibleRevival.tv. And if this show has blessed you, you can help us bless others by partnering with us for as little as $20 a month and help us to expand the reach of this show. We'd also like to invite you to join our Kingdom Discipleship Program, where you have an opportunity to get on weekly Bible Zoom calls with us and people around the world to deep dive into His Word. And you can check all that out at BibleRevival.tv. I'll see you next time, my friend.